don't want you to see my garage. <laughs> you don't want me to see your garage, but the, you need the space. The, the space is how you're going to get to where you want to be. I it's know. It's not going to happen by accident. Stuff's not going to fall out on you, but it's 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 bad. It's bad? All it's right, bad. well, let's see how bad it is. <sighs> yeah. yeah, so wow. here it is. Most of it is to donate. There are some things I do want to keep, and there's a lot that can be um, done with bulk pickup. Why don't we do it today? They'll say, yeah, really? right? there's no day like today, right? That's what they say. Oh my goodness, that would be awesome. <laughs> All right, let's do it. I'm on my way up to Monroe Township, New Jersey to help Sandra, a business owner who has been making keepsakes for the last four years. She primarily sells them on Etsy. The reason I'm on my way up there is to help her uh, get her numbers and prioritize uh, the different types of products that she wants to make in order. Why don't you show me around your space a little bit? My workshop is half laundry room, half workshop. It's kind of tiny, but it's perfect. It keeps all my stuff. I have everything organized. My ribbon for my ornaments <laughs> was something that I had made. When I was going through a rough time, I actually was looking for some inspiration and it was, that's where this came from. And at Christmas time, it's, it's even worse. Like there's <laughs> ribbons and boxes and glitter and everything all over the place. It actually expands into my dining room. I have ornaments out all over my dining room, sometimes into my kitchen. Like it's just, it's all over my piano usually. It's it's crazy wherever I can store them. At Christmas time when I'm pa boxing up all my orders, my younger son actually comes in and helps me. And um, that's always a challenge because it's like, there's not much space. Love to go into my garage. I have two workbenches, which would expand my little tiny space, but it's gonna take me a little while to get there because it's kind of been my dumping ground for the past four years. I am now cutting my own wood for some pieces, so I wouldn't have all the sawdust in my house. You need to find the time to do everything. I think it's really important that we take a look at ourselves and what we're trying to accomplish by having our own businesses, by having our own opportunities open up for us and admitting when, hey, things don't go as, well as planned, things don't go like we want them to and we have to take a step back to enable ourselves to enjoy what's around us. You've put the work in and now you're at this tipping point over the next year to two years that you wanna make a run at it and just make it go. And that's what I'm here to help you do today. <laughs> Setting you up for success, figuring out your numbers, getting your priorities straightened out. I think we're gonna get there for you. Can't wait, I'm excited. <laughs> Let's talk about your numbers, right? So how many units do you sell a year? So this year I actually have 120 sales so wow, far. Wow, really? So I had 290 sales last year. Something I've noticed this year that's different from my past years right. is that I haven't hit that slump where I kind of stop for like a month or two. Like right, I've, right, right. The past, the, the past few years have, um, kind of been a struggle just you know personally and my Etsy shop although it brings me such joy and and peace it's still you know it, it I lose it like I lose my momentum I lose my enthusiasm like I just I lose it until I'm kind of forced back into it with orders well let's talk about that like what gets in the way of all that life basically uh, so I, when I first started my shop um, I was actually I, not in the process of getting a divorce, but I was I was on on the way. And so the first year or so of my or two of my um, shop, I actually I was going through a divorce. So there was there was that. There was the stresses of that. There were the stresses of moving. There were the stresses, just lots of life stresses that kind of just get in the way. Since I only do my my Etsy shop part time, or it's the little moments where I do let my fears of what I'm doing kind of get in the way. A part of my my issue is filling in my blanks of, you know, like Christmas I've got pretty much down pat with my ornaments, but the rest of the year it's it's the other stuff that I need to fill in. Right. What is the average price for the, the items that you're selling that aren't digital? 
that, that are handmade. aren't digital, probably about $20. When I first started on Etsy, like I, I would look at other people's listings if they had something similar in that way to try to figure out my pricing, including my costs and everything. But that has been a struggle with me to make sure that I'm paying myself enough and I'm not, you know, losing money making these. And so let's let's take so. a look at the numbers for it, right? So let's take one of your items. Um, I think you you said you had one that you wanted to to price to price. Yeah, out I have. How to price out. I have my new item that I'm actually working on. So I have my my wood that I found, and I have my three different sizes. And so this is how much each so, each one is. So this one definitely needs to be more. Right, than, right. Um, and, and maybe it's like 12. And you right. won't sell many of them, but that's okay because the goal is to get people to buy this one. I just really needed help figuring this out because that with my time and paying myself. That's perfect. I think that having the higher price on all of these and marking them down will give right. you that opportunity to say, well, normally it's $10, but now I can sell it to you for seven and right. it's okay. Like you're still gonna make the money that right. you need to make to put you on track. Right. To, to being independent here. All right. Yes. Your numbers are super important and that you don't always have to know exactly to be doing it close enough. Sometimes guesstimations, estimations, educated guesstimations are what you need to be looking at in order to get you at least close to where you need to be. Start where, how much do I need to make to make this work so I don't have to go and work another job, so I don't have to go and worry about something else. That's why it's so important to figure out your, what your goal is going to be and then set that goal and then figure out how you can work backwards to make it a reality. Also keep in mind that it's really important that you can always go down in price, you can't go up in price. So setting your price higher than what you need it to be so you can come down enables you to give discounts without having to run into the issue of oh no I'm not making enough money doing this and I feel like I'm on a treadmill forever and always. Now we're headed to the park where we're going to talk about how I look at how Sandra should be making her business work for her lifestyle rather than her lifestyle for her business. Tell me a little bit about the, some of the issues that you're having with prioritizing your business. So my time is limited. I, I can only work on it, you know, nights and weekends, basically. I have my, my long list of things that I know need to get done. I also have, like, the ideas just keep coming. There's all these new items that I want to get listed um, so I could get more sales. I have a mail chip, chimp account that I need to get all the people that from, like, the Christmas time, like right. the November, December um, through now that I need to get on there. I don't know where to start. Like, it's, you know, I'll get started on this one thing and then it's like, oh, but I should really do this, you know, and I want to get that fundraising thing started. I think that takes up a, a lot of my time is just trying to figure out what to do first and and next and, you know, what makes the most logical sense. You need a content calendar to start. Probably, right? yeah. So, <laughs> so putting a list of what you want to get accomplished first. Right. And then put it, getting a calendar. Um, it doesn't even have to be a calendar first off. Like you should, like what I do is I go and I put everything on month to month to month. So I make like a list. Like, okay, in January, if I only get blah, 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 <laughs> I'll be happy, right? Right. So this way you're never feeling like you're running out of, uh, like you're not accomplishing enough. You, you, Cause it, it's very easy, especially as a, as a solopreneur <laughs> to, to feel like you're always running behind. You're right. always behind schedule and you're just letting things just fall, you know, you, you're pulling the, the steel ball, like <laughs> chocolate's running off the conveyor. Yes, yes, I feel that way a lot of times. <laughs> right, okay, great. I'm only gonna get this done in the month of April. And if I get more than that, if I get some of May done, that's awesome, <laughs> but that's not the goal. Starting the goal list out month to month. Okay. Then go from there to an actual calendar and things like sending out a mail mailing list thing. Right. Put that on your calendar. Right. So your goal, say once a month to start, right. or if it, they, you know, every two weeks. Right. And the great thing about that is it gives your customer the ability to say, hey, I'm expecting an email because <laughs> every Tuesday, right. Sandra is gonna send me an email prioritize that right. in a way that allows you to get ahead of schedule. Say like, okay, I'm gonna take two hours and I'm gonna write eight emails. 
Well, now you just created four months worth of content if you're doing it every two weeks. So MailChimp is probably one of the things I should tackle first is getting my list up to uh, up to par where it needs to be. Well, yeah, like because updated. there are your customers that have already bought from you. So right. they know and trust and like you right. already. Getting anyone to go from zero dollars to zero cents <laughs> to one cent is the hardest thing. Right. Once you get past that, you know, selling people on $7, $10, Forty dollars. It gets. It just gets easier and easier. Right. And I do have uh, return customers. And last uh, November, I, I did send out my very first Mailchimp um, email. Okay. And you know, I did. I did offer a, a discount to my returning customers, um, which some of them did use. So it was. It was nice to see. And and the people who do come back to me actually do purchase more um, than they did originally. How many people do you have on your list currently? Almost eight hundred. That is incredible. <laughs> yeah. Think. Think about this way you have 800 people on your list right, right. If every time you send an email out one percent of those people bought that's right. eight extra sales that you wouldn't have, have had get it to a point where every time you're writing something to them and you're right. highlighting a new product or a product that you haven't talked about in a while bam all of a sudden you just got eight more sales say ten dollars for if they all bought digital stuff right right that's uh 166 that's 1600 almost you know 16 1700 right. bucks that you didn't have before just by sending out that one email yep prioritizing when you're going to go about creating items right is is very important because that enables you to not feel like oh but i also have this idea and i have this idea and this idea and this idea and this idea <laughs> And it's like, what's one way am I going to pick first? Well, if you bake that into your calendar, you'll know when that right. time is. Maybe development of products shouldn't be October, November. Right. When you're looking at what else they're going to buy, if they, you know, if they did invitations almost a year ago, because well, then you'd be like, that hey, I be. got next year's invitation. Bam. Right there, <laughs> you know? You understand the value of what you're bringing to the table and understand that your advertising dollars is maybe better spent in a different way than traditional, you know, TV, radio, or even Facebook, social media ads. And you should probably think about that for your business when you're like, hey, I'm gonna create this awesome Facebook ad and it's gonna go out to all these people. Like, that's cool, but unless you're providing something that's so radically different, nobody's probably going to pick up on it and it's not gonna be a good spend. I don't want you to see my garage. <laughs> you don't want me to see your garage, but the, you need the space. The, the space is how you're gonna get to where you wanna be. It's I know. It's not gonna happen by accident. Stuff's not gonna fall out on you, but it's, it's, it's bad. It's bad? All right, well, let's see how bad it is. <sighs> yeah, so wow. here it is. Most of it is to donate. There are some things I do wanna keep, and there's, a lot that can be um, done with bulk pickup. Why don't we do it today? Let's make it really? happen, right? There's no day like today, right? That's what they say. Oh my goodness, that would be awesome. <laughs> All right, let's do it. So what you're looking to accomplish with the, the top formula, the team is you, right? right. Team always starts with, with me or I, <laughs> because there is an I here. With the offer, raising some of your prices to mm -hmm. accommodate the fact that you need to be making more money <laughs> right. and then discounting from there, because you can always come down, sell more digital stuff, as well as a uh, higher priced handmade stuff, because right. it takes a lot more of your time. Getting more marketing, to the people who trust you already. That part makes it a lot easier for you to make your sales totals instead of kind of hoping that people will buy again by accident. And then with the process, creating that content calendar, setting those goals, you, we talked a little bit about how you already have some goals set up and I, I love what you were telling me about the hearts <laughs> on the calendar, capitalizing on the sales that you've had in the past and put that discount on things that are like, hey, look, this is a sale. It might not really be a sale, <laughs> but if you have it where the price is just a little bit higher, so you're discounting a little bit further, getting other family members involved, I think is great. And I think finding ways to enable them, it would be very helpful for you. Draft reply emails 
and then you read them and say yes or no. That's a great idea, actually. <laughs> so what I'd like to offer you is a free WordPress website. To help your son, I want to give him my WordPress course that I have, and as well as an additional month of coaching via Skype. Yeah. So, so you can navigate some of these things as they come, because talking about where you're at today isn't necessarily where you're going to be at a month from now. It's things like this that give you that extra little kick of motivation that's like, okay, I can really do this. And it's great. And then, you know, like my, my 12 year old showing so much more interest in it. It's that's just awesome. special. Like it's. <laughs> <laughs>episode one of the top and we have been so fortunate to have such a great host company to come and help bring to the top i know that you have a lot of work ahead so i'm, I'm really looking forward to working with you over the next month looking forward to it sounds good yeah <laughs> see you <Sasha. laughs> Bye. Bye. excited and motivated about what's to come but I'm also very scared of what's to come um, it's just I'm, I'm so excited I feel like I'm actually going to achieve what I've been wanting to achieve and it's like right there like I feel like I'm on a slingshot and just slowly being pulled back little by little and like one of these days my feet are just gonna come up and I'm just gonna go flying and that's just gonna be an awesome feeling. I can't wait for that feeling. <laughs> what would you say to other business owners that are looking to get help from Super Joe Barno? I would say go and do it. There, you've nothing to lose, uh, everything to gain, and even if you get one piece of great advice, it's more than you had originally. I think it, it just, I, I've learned so much. I've gotten so much more motivation. Um, I, on, I can only work on my shop part-time, but I want to do, like I actually am trying to find the time to add more because I can't, I just want, I want the growth. I want the vision that um, Joe helped me get. Take a chance on Super Joe Pardo because it you won't regret it. Uh, <laughs> and, and he's blushing time. behind the scenes right now. <laughs> so how was the filming process? It was a learning experience, I think, for everybody. For myself, never being on, having been on film before, um, Joe actually made me feel more comfortable. I wasn't sure what I'd do. I thought I'd be a bumbling idiot once the camera was turned on, but I don't think I did that bad. So um, I, th I, I feel relaxed. I, I feel excited about it. I can't wait. I know it's going to be awesome because the whole experience was awesome. Well, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>